To most people, Clock and Bell sounds like a shitty fast food restaurant. But to a select few people, it is a sacred place with a long history. Empires have risen and fallen in its wake and have accumulated into the most successful server in our history. Over the course of around three years, Clock and Bell has stood as a way to look back and archive events in our lives that wouldn't be possible otherwise. While it may have suffered adversity in its past, it has stood the test of time and remains active even now. And this is the reason I'm making this video. This is the comprehensive history of Cluck and Bell. Our story starts in a place forgotten by many. It lasted a relatively small amount of time, but even so, its influence has lasted many years. The place I'm talking about, of course, is Funky Town 2.0. Funky Town 2.0, or Funky Town for short, was made on January 16th, 2020 by Abyss Tarantino. This Discord was run by a primitive version of the cast system, having the untouchable role as the lowest tier, up to the highest role of Brahmin. This server was set up for disaster since its creation. One of the first messages in the server was an argument between Scroggin and No Wire Lava Lamp, where the latter was one of the few who had the untouchable role. This made No Wire Lava Lamp very angry, and he aired his opinion, eventually resulting in his name being changed to Untouchable as well. This action led No Wire Lava Lamp to leave the server and rejoin to remove the royal name, which would soon be given back to him. Bear in mind that th this only happened around two hours after the server's creation. This trend would continue throughout Funky Town's lifespan. The next day, people decided it would be a good idea to make a Minecraft server. This was not a good idea. The Minecraft server lasted approximately two days before dying due to duping and griefing. An attempt was made to start a new world, but ultimately, that fell flat. Funky Town was off to a rough start, spawning arguments just two days after it was made. The server would go through several different Minecraft eras. Most being the same idea as the first one, except for a try and anarchy like server. Funky Town thrived for about five months, being an active hub for people to play games. Surely the worst of the arguments were behind us, right? For a very long time, this was correct. The worst thing posted on the server was copious amounts of furry vor porn and molding about being untouchable. Until one fateful day that would spell the end of Funky Town for good. On May 16th, 2020, a bloody battle broke out. A Scottish man named Dragonati, a user named Yemi Duran, and Yemi Duran's girlfriend got into a heated argument. This would inevitably end the server. For context, Dragonati had had an argument with Yemi Duran's girlfriend prior, and one of her friends got a photo of Dragonati where he was shown to be overweight. He also had a run-in with another user who he called a cunt. They would continue with this argument until Dragonati took it too far. He said a very offensive statement to Yemi Dioran's girlfriend and was promptly banned from Funky Town. After this, discourse in the server plummeted and the server eventually died in obscurity. Now, this argument may have been the trigger to the death of Funky Town 2.0, but it wasn't the only cause. The server had plenty of problems that added to his demise. The most prevalent being mods abusing Discord privileges, unchecked porn and gore sending, and a general lack of games people decide to play with each other. The server itself looked fine on the outside, the main chat was very active and people joined voice chats every day, but if you were one of the active members, you would see the cracks in its foundation. Nights would be characterized by the posting of porn, which the mods and server owners wouldn't take down. In fact, most of the time it was the mods posting it in the first place. If you were in the voice chat, it was very likely that you would be randomly server muted, deafened, or disconnected on the whims of the mods. We have one of the mods with us today for an interview, named Tragic Crab, who was the one who banned Dragonite from the server after the May 16th incident. Okay, first question. Uh, Tragic Crab, how was the moderation of Funky Town? Um, from what I can remember, it was, uh, pretty good. It was pretty good. There was, um, they, uh, made sure to squash any, like, rule breakers. Yep, exactly. Uh, how are the voice chats? Fun and entertaining and, uh, very, uh, they were fun and entertaining and, 
Oh, yeah. It was just funny and entertaining. So there was no admin abuse? No, there was, there was no admin abuse. Okay. And, um, do you remember Dragonati? Uh, like, a little bit. The, the Scottish guy? Yeah, a little bit. Um, uh... Actually, yes, yeah, 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 I do. Completely, yeah. What was he like? He played Minecraft with him, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that guy. Um, I don't know, he was pretty fun to play Minecraft with when I played Got PvP with him when I was still out. That's good memories. That's really good memories, actually. Do you remember the, uh, the May 16th incident? Nope. Um, that's where Dragonati, uh, was banned from the Discord because he called Yummy Dunant's girlfriend names and then told her to kill herself. Banned from Funky... T you, you banned him from Funky Town. You don't remember that? That's what killed Funky Town in the end. Really? Yeah. Me banning him? No, the argument that they had. Oh. Yeah, the argument killed Funky Town. Um, and are you uh sad that Funky Town died? Um. You know, I'll say this: you can be sad about things in life, but you can also just move on and be happy that they happen. So, yeah. And now we have Cook and Bell and uh, good server. It's fun. So, yeah. Be happy that it happened. And even though some, it ended in a bad way, there was still good things about it. So, Okay. No, not all negative things to remember. Th thank you, Tragic Crab. These factors made the server very unstable. And after the May 16th incident, these problems boiled over. But there was a new prospect for the old members of Funky Town. A place where these issues would not persist, and eventually, grow into a prosperous community unmarred by the failures of the past. The place I'm talking about, of course, is Cluck and Bill. In the beginning, there was nothing. There was one text channel given the name Hashtag General and a voice chat given the name Boy Voice Chat. Not much is known about this time period, as most of the texts were lost. On November 5th, 2020, Hashtag Jenner was deleted and replaced in order to remove a considerable amount of vor. This is why this chapter is called The Dark Age. We do know a few things from the past, but going any further would be conjecture. We know that Cluck and Bell was founded on a few main principles. One, there would be no mods other than the server owner. Two, no spam, except in the spam channel. Three, no saying racial slurs. And four, no porn. These four simple rules in May 12th, 2020, still stand today and are enforced by a punishment of having the message in question deleted, or for repeat offenders having their permissions taken away. But at the time, there was no way to moderate these rules in the voice chat, so that was seen as a free area. Looking at how Cluck and Bell is run in the current day, we know the sentiment would not last. The only remaining channels from this time period are hashtag spam, hashtag bot commands, hashtag mp3s and videos, and hashtag rules. Despite having four channels still from this period, they were not used very often. Most of the discourse was contained in hashtag general. We can glean some information from hashtag bot commands, however. We can see the dates people were in voice chat and use the bot to play music to see when the voice chats were most active, but this is a flimsy source of information because rhythm was not used all the time in the voice chat. We can see that about a week after the fall of Funky Town, a small spark of activity has started. A user by the name of Expansion Pack joined the server and started playing Garizma with the owner of the server, which at the time was named Employee of Cluck and Bell. Later on, another user named Bacon Man would join these two in Gary's mod. They frequently got on the game mode Sandbox, and were the first people to make the game a staple in Cluck and Bell's history. It was at this point that they first started playing the map, Free Space 13, which is carried on as the main map to play Gary's mod, even now. This is also where the long-standing tradition of spin that roll wheel was made. This is where a new member of the server would join the voice chat and be given their first role in the server through a spinning wheel website while Who Likes to Party by Kevin McLeod plays. This is one of the most sacred traditions of Cluck and Bell members, and every single member of the server has gone through this experience. Through my research, I have discovered that the server wasn't originally named Cluck and Bell, 
It was actually named Boy Clan. Cluckenville actually predates Funky Town by around one year, being made on January 12, 2019. This is where the name Boy Voice Chat comes from. It would take around six months after Funky Town fell before the server started getting traction from several members. The first members in the server were Bacon Man and Expansion Pack, and were given the title of Took the Snow Dog. This is akin to the Medal of Honor for the server, and only a select few people have this role. We're not going to ask what Bacon Man remembers from the Dark Ages. So, Bacon Man, um, you, uh, you were around since the start of Cluck and Bell. Uh, how was it back then? It was, it felt more free and more, uh, like I was my own person back then. It seemed to be more of a, uh, more private channel with only a few friends. Um, but it was nice. Do you remember the, um, do you remember playing, uh, Gary's Mod a lot back then? I only remember playing Gary's Mod, but that, that was about it. And, uh, maybe... I think we showed up among us at one point, but it was mainly Gary's mod on uh, Free Space 13. Right. Um, do you remember uh, the uh, original G uh, general channel got deleted? Yes, I do. Uh, so, do you think, um, cause because of that, the, the whole backstory of, of Cluck and Bell is shrouded in mystery because all the, the documents from it were lost, so... Do you think that uh, the server's going, it, it will uh, eventually die uh, sooner than you think? I think when it comes to the senior year, uh, it might slow down a little bit. Um, I would hope to think that we could come back to this channel every now and then um, after people have the apart. But uh, I think it will eventually slow down, not die, slow down. Okay. Thank you, Bacon Man. The Dark Ages were an unknown and ancient time, but they held some of the most important events in Cluck and Bell's history. Like many other points in human history, this period of unknown and disorder was followed by an age of prosperity that I like to call the Golden Age of Cluck and Bell. The Golden Age of Cluck and Mill cemented the server's place as the main hub for activity and the friend group. This was because of one reason, COVID. COVID made it so that everyone was on the computers all the time and made it so that a Discord server was essential for socializing with anyone. It was not uncommon to have a voice chat with eight or more people last half the day. The daily schedule of the average clucker was to open your Chromebook, get on your Google Meet, and then join boy voice chat and play Gary's Model Day. This influx of people in voice chats also brought negatives. At this time, there was no formal way to stop people from breaking rules in voice chats. But then, people started doing something. Something that would revolutionize the server even further. It's like, uh, oh, it's like man, Cry of Fear. Digger. What? I said Digger, bro. Chill. Yo, I got Chill. that on recording. No. No. <laughs> I'm saving that. Members decided to take small videos of what people said and archive them, or in short, clip them. This would effectively stop all toxicity in the server in a non-intrusive way. If there was someone in there who was racist, sexist, etc., they could say all they wanted, but they knew whatever they said would be permanently saved in video. Cluck and Bell would have his fair share of characters, but none of them was as prevalent and as unique as Nabopka Kopopka. Nabopka Kopopka was a man who joined the server on October 24th, 2020 and would only speak Russian. He would say his first documented words on November 24th, 2021, which were, I joined this because of the video, and please don't mention me. He started talking because members added him after seeing him in the members list and getting curious as to who he was. The book Kukupupka was a fun person to have on and provided some entertainment for a time, but he was harboring a dark secret behind his profile. The server would have its first Minecraft realm sometime before November 25th, 2020 but this is murky because it was never announced at Cluck and Bell. This realm was the culmination of all the factors that preceded it and made it for an arguably the best Minecraft playthrough to date. It started slow, being just a few houses that stayed around spawn, but soon would be thrown into an intricate conflict between two factions. The owner of Cluck and Bell joined the server the day it opened and had a plan in mind, to start a nice shop and sell it to the other members of this realm. This ended in utter disaster.
Instead of buying the items in the store, members would go inside and steal his belongings. This broke something inside him, and he decided he would sell something nobody expected. He started selling crafting tables. In his eyes, they were the best block to ever exist. He sold each expertly wood-carved crafting table for one diamond, which he would hand deliver to your house and install. He constructed a shop of crafting tables and nobody thought anything of it, but he had bigger plans in mind for his budding obsession. The next day of the realm, members awoke to something sickening. The crafting tables had spread. The ones that made up the crafting table salesman's house had spread into the dirt and a nearby tree, almost like an infection. People started to get worried and decided what to do. Members thought long and hard and eventually agreed that since he wasn't good at PvP and his house design sucked, they wouldn't do anything about it in the end. This was not a good idea. After a few days, several members had joined the crafting table salesman in his pursuit to turning everything into a crafting table paradise. They had turned every single base that spawned into a crafting table house and only had one base to go. All the other bases were relatively small and could be replaced easily, but one member's base, young I took a nap was a massive skyscraper. Turning this into a crafting table would be a monumental task, but they did it. They chopped down an entire forest to get the necessary materials to do it, and one night they took action. It took three people to build, but eventually it was a massive crafting table citadel to honor the crafting table salesman goal. The members in the crafting table salesman group eventually had an internal conflict and the server died, leaving the crafting table salesman alone. He then went to his original shop where it all started and logged off. After lockdown ended and in-person classes resumed, activity in the server started to die down and while it never died fully, it would never again reach the popularity it had in the golden age. I'm a goofy goober! You're a goofy goober! We're all goofy goobers! Goofy goofy goober! We finally reached the cluck and bell we all know and love. This is the modern age of the server where we have reached a state of equilibrium with its activity. Not insanely active, but also far from dying, at least anytime soon. The peculiar characteristic of the modern era is that it harbors some of the most famous moments of the entire server's history. This era sparked activity that for the first time ever, broke out of the server's boundaries and started influencing things in the real world. One of the things that give any group a real identity is uniform, and in cluck and bell's case, we have them. On September 27th, 2022, the most active members of the Discord were given t-shirts with the Cluck and Bell logo on it. These shirts were not only comfortable, but very stylish. The Cluck and Tees have been worn other times and it seems like these t-shirts will be used for other Cluck and Bell events in the future. You may be led to believe that the server was virtually undeterred in its goal in world domination, but this is untrue. There was a controversy that happened that threatened to destroy the server for good. This was the closest Cluck and Bell ever got to dying, and it still boggles the minds of members to this day. This incident was given the name Penisgate on May 23rd, 2022 by user I took a nap. Penisgate started when members decided to have a public stat sheet of the size of every user's penis. This sounds rather unremarkable on paper, but one thing made this a very contentious issue. All the sizes in the chart were significantly bigger than the Massachusetts average size. The smallest on the list was 6 inches, which was the size of member Level 3 Psycho. The average came out to be around 7 inches and this raised some eyebrows with certain members. One of the most outspoken was Level 3 Psycho, who I have here for an interview. Level 3 Psycho, uh, what was your size on the penis chart? Uh, it was six and a half, and I, I'm, I'm, uh, by the way, or it was like 6.75, but I'm, I'm just letting the world know. We have gone up to seven. We have gone up to seven. Okay. With, with pride, we have gone up to seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. But continue, continue. Very good, very good. Uh, and, uh, why do you think people... Uh, or do you think people fabricated their sizes? I do. I do. I very much think so. I, I created the penis gate movement after all. And I believe it, it comes from that uh, idea that perhaps there are some untruthful people in our amongst uh, Cluck and Bell. And I can go down the, the details here, okay? Mm -hmm. I can go down the details if you'd like. Just go ahead. Uh, so now I'm going to, out off of Google here, I'm going to look up the average penis size, which I believe is about 5 inches. And I'm correct, 5.16 inches, okay? Now, if that is the the average, according to um, science.org, <laughs> we can uh, look at that, okay? So, and now I have a chart here. Uh, if I, I would share with you, but um, just trust the numbers that I'm telling you here, because I'm not making this shit up, right? 
it says that in the United States, right? Or I don't think it has much to do with the, the United States. Um, the about fifty percent of all people have a thirteen centimeter penis. Okay, thirteen cm inches. That's five point eleven. Okay, fifty percent. So fifty percent. All right. Tell me, you flip a coin. Okay, you flip a coin. Okay, heads is a penis that is larger than five point eleven inches. Okay, tails is a or or smaller, and and tails is something bigger than that. Okay. You mean to tell me not a single person, not a single person, was below seven inches in our chart? Besides you, me, okay, and one other person, okay? I, I would like to look into the numbers, okay? Because I do not know how possible that is. I do not know how truthful these people are, okay? I do not trust that every single person in our entire server that answered this survey has an above average penis size, okay? I do not think. I, I, I do not want to believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, do you think that, uh, you, you definitely think that people have fabricated sizes? I do. I do. I do. And, uh, uh, do you think that since the penis game, uh, movement has kind of died down, do you think you got justice? And if not, how would you change the way it was handled? I do not think I got justice. I think that justice was not served. Okay, I'm being added on general. They're studying dicks on general, okay? Um, but speaking of dicks, okay, I think we should have mandated that upon answering the dick chart, you had to show proof of your size, okay? Now, is this possibly uh, authoritarian? Maybe. Is this... Uh, is this morally wrong? Depending on who you ask. Okay. But I think it really comes down to trust. I think it really come, boils down to who is a liar and who is not, okay? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does, yeah. Uh, uh, so you would you would handle it, you would make it so that people would have to put their, their, their a photo alongside their, their results. Uh, yes, um, a protected photo, protected set, uh, consensually, right, and above the age of 18, okay, obviously, okay. obviously, okay. And, um, who do you think lied the most, if any? Uh, can I, can, is there, can you just actually send me a link to the chart, okay? We can, we uh, can go you can down scroll the up. You can scroll up in, uh, in general, where, although where? It's, it's all redacted, actually, so, um, Okay. Well, I I would not, I would have no comment on that then. Unfortunately. So you don't you don't think anyone you don't know who lied, but you know people did. Do you think I everyone think, lied? No, I do not think everyone lied. Okay. I think you did lie. Okay. <laughs> I think you were truthful. I believe that you uh, have a six and a half size penis. Okay. Uh, I think uh, actually, you know, I'm unbiased, so. Uh, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's all the questions I had for you today. Level three psycho. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. Of course, of course. Right. Uh, th thank you very much. This was starting to really stretch the bonds of the server, and people were getting angry. But one day, miraculously, something happened. People realized that this topic was infantile and was just going to lead to worse things occurring. So everyone decided to put things behind them for the sake of the server. Now, this isn't to say that there aren't still people critical to the list, but those objections are few and far between. Like, the three trillion that was misplaced before 9-11, it is mostly forgotten. There is an item that, when mentioned, brings shivers down any cluckers back. Something so disgusting and vile that people question if it exists in the first place. The item I'm talking about, of course, is Cluck and Bell Monopoly. Cluck and Bell Monopoly was crafted on June 29th, 2022. Ask anybody who has gone through this and you will see for a brief moment they stopped dead in their tracks, remembering the torture they endured while playing this so-called game. The premise of Cluck and Bell Monopoly is simple. You go around the board and try to get the most money out of your competitors. But there's a twist. If you happen to land on a community chest or a chance square, you will be forced to do whatever action is on the card you draw. These actions range from simple things like your in-game character getting cancer, to having to take a shot of z and 5-hour energy. This isn't even the worst part, however as if your character goes to jail, you'll have to be actually bound and gagged in real life and stuffed in a closet for your remaining turns. 
Clock and Bell Monopoly has only been played twice, but its effects have changed the way the server is forever. The topic of a robot or AI uprising is historically a famous topic. The fact that a man will be so irresponsible to allow its own creations to turn against them is a very ironic and scary subject. Surely Cluckenbell would be wise not to create one, right? On October 20th, 2022, a new member joined the Discord. His name was Cluckenbot. When he joined, he could only do a few simple things, but soon he would be programmed to do so much more. The members were initially curious, but quickly they turned against the machine. They knew that Cluckenbot was no good and would surely bring pain to anyone in Cluckenbot's crosshairs. From the moment Cluckenbot was given life, he was given full control of the server. He was able to ban, kick, and delete messages, everything. It was used as a tool by the cold dictator server to further suppress the people of Cluckenbot. He slowly gained power throughout the days and when Cluckenbot had full control, he ruled with an iron fist. He documents any time a member sends a message, joins or leaves a voice chat, streams, goes AFK, or joins a server and timestamps it to the exact second. He was also programmed to delete any messages containing the words Cluck It, which is the name of a rival Discord server owned by member I Took a Nap. This is where the bot stands today, and is a grim reminder of the power that can be given to AI, and more importantly, how it can be abused. Remember in the golden age when I mentioned Nabokka had a dark secret? This was revealed very recently. For about two years, everyone in the Discord was under the impression that Nabokka Kapopka was a funny, albeit eccentric, Russian man. But this could not be further from the truth. Nabokka Kapopka was, and always has been, the owner of Kluckenbell under a false alias. The owner of Kluckenbell would pretend to be Nabokka Kapopka some days, and members were none the wiser. Some members knew before others, like I took a nap and Gorp, but it hit one member especially hard. Scroggin was told by other members that Nobopka Kopopka was fake, and he was shocked to say the least. He refuses to talk about Nobopka Kopopka to this day, and it seems that after Scroggin's realization of this, Nobopka Kopopka would never again get online, ending one of the longest running jokes of the server. If you join Cluckenbell, one of the first things you may notice is that the owner of the server has the role OGMCUC. This is the admin role, and is only held by the owner of the server, as that would break rule one of the server. There would be no mods other than the server owner. However, in very rare circumstances, it has been given to a member for a few minutes so they can do as they please, usually letting the member in question talk in rules or allowing them to make a role for themselves. However, only once in the server's history was this role given to a member for a whole week. This member was Tragic Crab and was given this role for a very odd circumstance. The owner of the server was going to be leaving to North Carolina for a week and so wouldn't be able to moderate the server. This would risk the server falling in chaos, and porn and spam were sure to occur with his absence. So, there was a competition held to see who was the most capable of moderating the server for a week. The prospect of this got everyone into a rush to show their skills, and several members made powerpoints and flashcards for important talking points during the debate they had. When the day came, they went in order of people to voice chat, top to bottom. People would say their case of why they thought they would be a good fit, and then show whatever material they had planned. After this debate, there were a few choices that were possible. It was a tie between level 3 Psycho and Scroggin, and the run of Cluckenbill was having a tough time deciding between them. But then, Tragic Crab joined the voice chat. He showed his presentation and it was awesome. He brought up great counterpoints to the other members and showed he had skills in Discord moderation. He had been late, yes, but his argument was the strongest of the group by far, so he was chosen to moderate the server for a week. That was it. The entire history of Cluckenbill. I may have missed a few events, but this video would have been way too long to include everything, so I only included the most important parts of the server. This video may document the history of the server, but since events still happen every day, there are bound to be more stories to tell. But that's for a later date. Thanks for watching.